What's up everyone, Arctic here, and today I wanted to talk about crowdfunding esports tournaments. This is a topic of discussion that Skylus brought up on Frag Logic episode 33 this past week. If you care to watch our discussion, you can tune in uh, down in the description. I have a link for that show, that specific segment of the show. But uh, I wanted to basically put this out there, individual video, very good topic of discussion. Is crowdfunding the way, the future for esports communities? And should esports communities basically embrace uh, crowdfunding as a way to get tournaments uh, up and running with minimal risk, I think, involved on, uh, let's say, a league or uh, just some type of like a hype festation, some type of community supported uh, event overall. So uh, where this kind of stems from is Valve's recent success with Dota 2 and most recently CSGO. Now, Dota 2 had uh, in-game microtransaction. That's a free-to-play MOBA game for anyone under a rock. Uh, but uh, they had, uh, I believe they raised a million dollars uh, that, that uh, Valve just put up in the community, uh, raised another one and a half million dollars through in-game microtransaction uh, transactions specifically for and geared towards the competitive uh, Dota 2 tournament called uh, the International. Uh, they made these compendium sales uh, and the whole, not just the competitive community, but the whole entire Dota 2 community could contribute to this prize pot. Then Valve said, uh, you know, we're going to try this again uh, with probably the most recognized uh, PC shooter, I'd say, to date in terms of uh, esports scene with Counter-Strike Go. Uh, they had loot crates, I believe, in-game that players in the community could uh, basically loot, purchase, whatever, that went towards um, the competitive community. And it was announced uh, for DreamHack, there's a $250,000 tournament uh, at the event that was basically from this crowdfunding or in-game micro microtransaction that players from that entire community, again, could contribute for specifically for esports so basically this allows players to um, piggyback off of developers um, in the competitive scene so that uh, they're not relying on like a major league gaming or a C a cpl who's not around or an esl or a wsvg or any of these gaming leads that have popped up and kind of gone away uh, the most recent was uh, ipl uh, which, you know, that if you're invested in those uh, leagues, that's it's a big risk. And uh, uh, I guess it, it really comes down to who does this benefit um, and the types of games that it benefits. Obviously, very large communities are going to flourish from this type of uh, system. Uh, but I also think that there's room for smaller communities. Now there is a little bit of a caveat here. I think currently, until next gens get released and we get better understanding of how the economy works uh, in those games, this typically only will work well with PC games uh, in the current state of of how everything kind of goes. But I think next gen uh, systems should be able to uh, implement crowdfunding uh, as a way to fund esports tournaments. Also very uh, keen on free-to-play games because of mic microtransactions. Uh, you know, that's like cosmetic stuff. Hey, these jerseys or this this one item that you buy, uh, that's going to go towards uh, everyone in this prize pot uh, for this tournament. That's that's like a free-to-play thing. That's like something that is very easy to put in and implement, and then you can get quick turnaround for it uh, should the community decide to embrace that and purchase uh, games but basically any game that utilizes microtransactions would work so a call of duty or a halo uh or a gears of war even or uh any game that kind of had those cosmetic items in there uh that could be you know specifically set at a price and then purchased by uh the players in those communities could technically pull this off so that's why i think there's there's room for uh next gen systems to implement this type of idea 
Now, Major League Gaming, and this is kind of the scary stuff with this, Major League Gaming uh, kind of had something similar with their memberships uh, when they launched a couple years ago. And I was one of the first ones to support the idea of uh, paying, buying into uh, supporting tournaments, uh, you know, having your little piece of the uh, pie go towards the big picture. And uh, what Major League Gaming, what I kind of found with the way they did things, you were funding and supporting the league, but not the communities. Uh, and kind of what happened was they weren't very transparent with what actually uh, you were spending was going towards. So I don't know if it was going towards keeping the lights on at MLG or a Dota uh, tournament or a uh, StarCraft tournament or a Call of Duty tournament or a Gears of War tournament. None of that was transparent. So ultimately, I think that that was a mistake um, to kind of sink a lot of money into without having a very clear picture of what uh, the exact plan was for where that money was going. Now, Valve kind of also messed up with that with CSGO. There was really, you know, they kind of introduced this crowdfunding uh, system into uh, that game, but they didn't really have a clear picture of where it was going to go until it got announced at DreamHack. So people were just blindly buying into something with no goal really in mind. So I think that it's important that if uh, a developer or uh, if you, you're even thinking about uh, investing into something that's already someone that is already doing crowdfunding, you have to know and understand uh, where your money is going towards and be like, yeah, that's really going to benefit those guys. So being transparent about it is uh, an absolute must. The last thing is really coaxing the developers uh, to make this a part of their game. Uh, again, the ones that have microtransactions, this is very easy to implement. Uh, and again, you have to say, hey, and use Valve as an example. You can use Major League Gaming, but that again, they don't really have a, a clear, yep, you, when you invest in this, it's going towards this game. Uh, but Valve did with the, the uh, Dota 2 compendium. I'll actually link that in the description if you guys want to look at it. Uh, but this can benefit both small and large communities. The smaller uh, competitive communities uh, get funded for, you know, it could be online tournaments. It could be, uh, you know, at, uh, at an event somewhere uh, like a DreamHack or an MLG event or, heck, even a local uh, land center somewhere. Um, but what that does is it opens up everyone's eyes to uh, this little small esports community. You know, it could be a thousand guys. Uh, but, you know, and you can have 100,000 guys in your your community uh, that are playing your game, but they all are buying this with a clear picture of what it's going towards. So it's like, oh, I didn't even know that uh, it may be the cosmetic item or whatever item, microtransaction item is really cool and it perks their interest in the competitive scene and then you have more fans. So it, it really benefits small communities, but for larger communities, it basically as a way to establish dedicated and consistent tournament funding, uh, which I think is really important once you scale this to like a Call of Duty or a Halo or Gears of War at, at some points. Um, those games could really benefit from crowdfunding because of how, how substantially uh, large their uh, communities are and the number of players consistently playing. So. That's something to think about. Uh, I wanted to put that out on the table. I'm really interested to see what you guys think about the idea of um, trying to get developers to uh, have items in their games that go specifically towards esports so that tournaments can start being funded on a more consistent basis. I am one that would support it for specific communities. I don't think that I would go the route of MLG unless they were completely transparent with where my however much money a month or year is going um, and who it's benefiting. So hope you guys enjoyed this and until the next time, I will catch you guys later. Peace.